Hello and welcome back to Boots and Bounty Homestead. Today we are going to go through the steps of making a sourdough brioche bread. And today's sponsor is T-Mars and they have sent us a complete sourdough kit to show you guys. So here's just the informational sheet that comes inside the package. And then also in the sourdough kit, they include a silicone collapsible round Banneton basket, as well as an oval Banneton basket, so you can make either size bread with this kit. They also include a tall flat spatula and a basting brush. Both of these are silicone. And then we're going to move on to the jar. This is one of the tall skinny jars. Very nice to stir in. And it has all kinds of components on the inside of the jar. It does include a cloth elastic topper that you can put on your jar if you so choose to. As well as the feeding schedule elastic band that you put around. You choose the day and the time that you have last fed it. I'll show you that shortly. And then it also includes two temperature stickers. One is mainly for Fahrenheit. The other is for Celsius, but it has both of those gauges on both of the stickers. So you can use either one. It also includes a sourdough bread lame and five blades and a cover. So once you put the blade on the lane, then there is a leather cover that you can put over it. So after washing the jar, we're going to go ahead and get our sourdough starter fed. This is straight out of the refrigerator. And what I like to do is start with a quarter cup of starter and a quarter cup of water. I always like to add the water to the sourdough starter and get it dissolved. And then we add in the flour. And I don't measure my flour. I don't really measure the water either, but I just happen to on this instance since I ha already had a dirty measuring spoon. But I'm going to add in the flour to make it a really thick, like a drop biscuit kind of dough. It's a little bit thicker than pancake batter. And this is going to feed the sourdough starter very nicely. We're going to scrape down the edges so we'll be able to see it. And then we're going to put on our temperature sticker and I like to put mine right beside the numbers that I'm going to be looking at so you see on the jar there are numbers that I'll show you in a sh in a second what those are so with the feeding schedule band we're going to put it on the jar and that long dark line you see beside the temperature sticker it says last fed on and then what you're doing is lining up the day and the time that you last fed it on and you want to put the top of that band at the bottom of where your sourdough starter stops so that way you can see the rest of it as it is growing okay so now that our sourdough starter is nice and bubbly um, we are going to proceed with making our brioche bread now we are going to do this in about a six to eight hour period. And what we are going to do is start off measuring out all of our ingredients. So in a bowl, we are going to add together 200 grams of milk. This can be any kind of milk of your choice, oat, almond, coconut, raw, store-bought, doesn't matter. And you want to warm the milk just to like bottle temperature about 90 degrees or so and if it's cold you can put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or you can warm it on the stove top whichever you prefer to the milk we're going to add in the sourdough starter flour and eggs We need to let that mixture sit for about 
30 minutes. Once the dough has sat and rested, we're going to add in the softened butter and salt. You either want to hand mix or knead the dough for about 8 to 10 minutes or you can use some kind of dough hook mixer for about 3 minutes on low up to about 20 minutes. You want it to be soft and non-sticky and very elastic. Once the dough is ready, it should be pulling away from the sides of the bowl. At this point, we are going to transfer the dough into a large bowl or you can leave it in the bowl that you mixed it in. Cover with plastic or beeswax or something that could block the air because you don't want your dough to dry out and this is going to sit on the counter for our bulk fermentation. We want it to rise but we don't want it to double in size. We're only going to do about 50% and the way you figure that is you can put a mark on your bowl or some kind of indicator of where the dough starts out. Then you can put a mark at the doubled in size mark that's going to be a hundred percent so half of that is going to be your 50 percent mark and that's about where we want it to get so once your dough has reached the 50 percent in rise mark a little more a little less totally up to you we're going to divide the dough into six equal parts and then we're going to roll these into balls We're going to put these into a loaf pan because this makes one loaf and it's like a nine by five loaf that this recipe makes. So our six balls, we're going to line up three on each side. So it'll be two and two and two. And the way, the reason you do this is because the gluten inside each ball and the yeast inside each ball is going to take care of itself. When you have a large loaf like you make usually for a sandwich loaf it kind of all works together because it's one large loaf and that's where sometimes you can get that tougher texture whereas making three individual balls the gluten and the yeast um, they all activate inside its own ball and therefore this is where this becomes that rich nice fluffy dough but once it's shaped, we are going to allow it to proof and it's going to get nice and puffy. Um, and because we have the butter and the milk and the eggs, which is all that fat, this could take a little while. So this is where you're going to be doing your biggest rise. Once it has risen, it'll be time to bake. And we bake it at either 180 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. While the oven is preheating, we want to use one egg and one tablespoon of water and this is called an egg wash mix that well and then we're going to brush over the top of the brioche loaf so you're going to bake it about 30 minutes and just watch it because it's best to bake it in a clear loaf pan if you have one so you can see it because this loaf does burn easily because it has so much fat in it now if you get close to about the 20 25 minute mark and your top starts to get dark go ahead and put a piece of foil over the top and it will defer that heat and it's not going to allow the top to darken anymore and then once the loaf pan comes out you can brush it with the top brush the top with butter and then remove it out of the pan after about five or ten minutes and allow it to cool completely over on a wire rack 